Hello, uh, my name is uh, Peter Hinke. I'm a uh, uh, vascular surgeon from the University of Michigan. I have an interest in uh, thrombosis uh, research and, um, and involved with the uh, PBD Council and ATBB uh, program committee uh, this year. Hi, I'm Mary Cushman. I'm a hematologist at the Larner College of Medicine at the University of Vermont. And I'm a longtime American Heart Association volunteer and study thrombosis. Uh, care and risk factors. And hi, I'm Melissa Wolverig. I'm a professor at the, in the Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine uh, at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. I have a long-standing interest in mechanisms of hemostasis and thrombosis, bleeding and clotting disorders, um, with interest in clot quality and animal models of, of uh, bleeding and thrombosis and how we can apply that to understanding human physiology. So uh, I'll start out um, as one of the co-moderators of the uh, session. We have a special session tomorrow uh, that is unique um, in this uh, meeting as it hasn't been done before. So uh, Dr. Uh, Pradhan, who's the uh, head of the PBD Council currently, um, attended the ISTH meeting last year uh, and was impressed with the, the quality and, and relevance of that uh, meeting and thought there was a lot of synergies between AHA PBD Council, ATBB, and ISTH, a lot of acronyms, um, and had the idea of a potential joint session at this meeting. So she convened uh, a lot of the uh, folks in leadership uh, last October, had kind of a brainstorming meeting, and then it came to uh, fruition uh, at this uh, meeting currently. So the format of it uh, is unique in a couple ways. First, um, uh, it'll be uh, a, a brief overview, and then four experts uh, that were uh, kind enough to volunteer uh, to kind of give their uh, opinion uh, of what are the key um, uh, uh, questions in arterial and venous thrombosis. Uh, and then we had, uh, prior to the meeting uh, now, uh, is uh, we had sent out a large, uh, or rather a survey to all the um, societies involved uh, in this joint session to get kind of a crowdsourced um, uh, le uh, opinion of similarly what are the high, uh, most important questions in, in arterial and venous thrombosis. So that data we have, and Dr. Jeff Barnes, who's also on the PBD Council, will be giving uh, that portion uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the session. So uh, it'll be uh, the four experts first giving their opinion, then the crowdsource data, and then we're really hoping to have a lot of uh, audience input, and there's enough time uh, built in for that. Uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to turn this over to a couple of the experts uh, to give their uh, weigh in and their opinions on the session. So first I'd like to say it's such a thrill to be able to bring together organizations like the American Heart Association, the ISTH, and the American Venus Forum to work on a project like this. Um, I think it's um, hopefully a first step to other things we can do together to try to synergize the knowledge that exists in the different organizations so that we can bring improved care to patients. And so I'm really thrilled um, to be participating in this effort as a person who's very active with, with two out of the three organizations. And um, it was such a great idea to think about what I would talk about um, in this context, being given the opportunity to say, what would you do if you had a $10 million to try to advance science around uh, the care um, or health outcomes of people with thrombosis. So my topic has to do with uh, venous thrombosis. And I'm also a cardiovascular disease and chronic disease epidemiologist in my background. And you know, I'm kind of schizophrenic in my research career. And you know, I live about half my time on the arterial side of the circulation and the other half on the venous side of the circulation. And I've been able to participate in large scale studies, cohort studies over the whole course of my career that have taught us myriad um, things about the risk factors and onset and progression of atherosclerotic disease um, and how it impacts every part of the body. And I realized as I was thinking about this session, we don't really have the same information about venous disease. And so the topic I'm gonna talk about is going to be a bold proposal to develop a large cohort of patients who've experienced venous thrombosis and really follow them over a period of time to determine the impact of this disease on um, a variety of health outcomes. There is so much we don't understand. I mean, we've come a long way in our understanding in the last 20 years about why people get thrombosis and what happens to them after they get thrombosis. 
but um, we've only scratched the surface. So my proposal will have to do with a, a bold concept of bringing together um, a variety of people from basic clinical and translational science to use the population of patients as the laboratory where we can learn um, really what are the health outcomes in these people and what are the determinants of, of adverse health outcomes in these patients. So with that, I think I'm passing it along to Alyssa. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. So I echo many of the things that uh, Mary just said. I'm also I have a passion for thrombosis research, and so the opportunity to um, do this in the context of multiple organizations and really the leverage the strength of these organizations is a is a unique opportunity. It's a new opportunity, and I hope something that um, we're going to be able to do more of in the future, so that we can work in a more um, uh, integrated manner to, to, to really meet this, the similar goal that we all have, which is to understand fundamental mechanisms and be able to apply this to improve um, uh, care of patients and prevention of disease. So I was tasked with, um, as a basic researcher, a translational researcher, talking about our work in and how we, we go into the laboratory using information that we get from patient studies and epidemiologic studies and, and really developing models to understand that in a controlled fashion so that we can separate out things that are associated with disease from things that are causative in disease. And that's something I've had a long interest in. And so I, I think I'm going to take a slightly different approach um, than Mary's tomorrow. I, I couldn't narrow it down very well, but I'm going to talk a little bit about areas that I understand as a non-clinician are important in clinical medicine um, for understanding venous disease, and then discuss a little bit about what the basic needs are in this area, how we need more models and how we need to understand more models, um, and then apply them into clinically relevant, physiologically relevant uh, ways to understand um, some of the, the pathogenesis of, of venous thrombosis. And a major point that I'd like to make, again, echoes a little bit of what Mary said, and, and that is that um, I've really, looking at the data, become committed to the idea that understanding this really isn't done by one lab, but it's a, a very long process that takes many years and requires diversity in, in multiple areas and diversity of thought. And so I'm also going to include a little bit of information on um, my thoughts on how we really need to, to attack this problem in a multidisciplinary approach using clinical information, epidemiologic information. Um, biophysics, mathematical modeling, biochemistry, cell biology, animal models, everything there is in order to understand really deeply what's going on and develop um, a fundamental understanding of the mechanisms and, and hopefully new treatments um, to treat the disease and act, prevent it from happening in the first place. Well, and I'll say um, we didn't really plan this together, <laughs> but I think our talks are going to really complement each other because the themes I'm hearing, yeah. um, similar themes between the two of us, I can't wait. Yeah, to see too. what you're going to say. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think it's going to be a great session. I think it's going to be fun. It'll be a little bit um, more casual at the uh, end of it, just in terms of like getting audience participation. But I think that'll be hopefully real organic and get some uh, other good ideas and critiques and that type of thing. And I'll mention that uh, the other two uh, speakers are um, Josh Beckman from Vanderbilt uh, on our clinical arterial side, and then Phil Sow from Stanford, who will be a little more on the basic science side of uh, atherothrombosis. So I think it's a, a great panel, and um, we from the Planning Committee really appreciate their, uh, you know, effort that went into this because it's not an easy task to come up with, you know, 30,000 level uh, viewpoints and, and uh, for these important questions. So I think one of the unique things about this session is that we've done the work in advance to do the survey monkey and crowdsource from people who may or may not be at the session. We'll have the speakers in the session and then we'll have the audience participation after the session and the organizers will get together after that to bring together all the ideas and develop a white paper on what is brought forward as you know, the major research needs. And we hope that will be a springboard for the entire research community to gain ideas and to really catalyze this area of research going forward into the future. Mm -hmm.